Kind of a strange development, and much quicker than I ever thought that I'd be talking about this again. I thought I pretty much wrapped it up with, what was that, Friday's video? Anyways, we got Brian Koberger back out here, okay? He's back appearing in court, and he apparently has some cuts on his face. It's like, oh my god, is he trying to end it all? It's like, okay, cool. This guy knows enough. He knows his way around a knife enough to know if he wants to end it, he can end it. And of course, it's not like he's going to be in any rush to make his moves because he just waived his right to a speedy trial. So don't anticipate a trial anytime. I don't know, during this presidential cycle, to be completely honest, this could be a minute before he gets out there. So what do we got so far? Idaho murders, uh, murders suspect Brian Koberger appears in court with cuts and bruises on his face and neck. Uh, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. I don't know exactly what to take from this but we'll see what we got accused killer brian koberger looked roughed up and had mysterious cuts on his face during a courtroom appearance thursday in moscow idaho where a judge set his next court date uh, the 28 year old criminology phd student had two gashes near his chin and apparent bruises on his neck as he was escorted by a sheriff's deputy into the courtroom of, uh, for the five minute hearing wearing leg shackles yeah 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 wearing a prison jumpsuit orange t-shirt and all that stuff with the very very strong head lurch forward i guess but yeah there you can see some uh, uh nicks and stuff on his chin and his jawline that's like okay did he get into a fight did somebody you know catch him with a razor or something like that maybe potentially but i don't know would you really mess around with somebody who has got four bodies under his belt and also, like it says here, uh, waived his right to a speedy trial and was ordered to continue to be held without bail. Uh, preliminary status for his hearing is going to be a June 26th, okay, paving the way for a trial, which she'll set a trial date for, I don't know, the next time that a docket's going to be full. Maybe, okay, the way that it's set right here, June 26th, don't anticipate a trial anywhere before the fall, okay? Unless, of course, there's stories that continue to keep, it, or keep this in the popular conscious consciousness. Oh, man, it's going to be a minute. It's going to be a long old fucking second, okay? But there are some weird stories that are popping out because of this, and that's kind of why, kind of want, uh, why I wanted to opine on this subject a little bit more, because when it comes to an initial appearance, somebody waving their right to a speedy trial, it's like, okay, he knows that he's going to be going down. It's going to be a fucking minute, okay? He's got nothing but time on his hands. He's being held without bail. He ain't fucking going anywhere, and he knows that he's going to be doing a bunch of time behind bars, even after... After he has his day in court and given the lack of real tangible evidence like if he could find a way to somehow get like a really boomer jury where they don't quite believe all the technology evidence that they have right there there's a way that they might be able to navigate sowing enough doubt where it's like ah, i don't know maybe this guy was falsely accused and they don't actually have the murder weapon at this point in time and like there's some different strategies that's out there but he waived his rights so there's some other things that you can infer from that at least from a, a outside perspectives point of view because obviously a jury's not going to be privy to that information because that could be detrimental to his defense so this is just all extracurricular investigation being done by one person sourcing a bunch of topics to talk about on any given day but regardless we got this other story of people who know Koberger okay because I've read some stuff that uh his uh, one of his instructors in his PhD program was like yo man uh dude was a exceptional student he's kind of a quiet dude okay nobody would have thought anything of him he's a militant vegan whatever the hell that means I know uh, vegans are normally nutters and if you take a look at what Robert Downey Jr. is going through now that he switched over to being vegan they don't don't really have that much energy or upper body strength to really wrestle anybody down let alone four people and stick a knife into them okay so what can we find out there from any credible people that are around him well was our dude an incel wow maybe perhaps girls made fun of him in middle school of course everybody gets made fun of in middle school i got made fun of in middle school then again i didn't you know lash out irrationally and start killing people just because i couldn't get my body up or body count up in middle school didn't mean that i had to you know, fill out that deficit in my late 20s by stabbing people with a knife i'm stabbing girls with something it just wasn't a knife even though there were a couple of girls that made some funky requests anyways uh former cheerleaders who rejected brian koberger hey man it like i know that this guy was an aspiring serial killer perhaps okay but at least he had the audacity and he had the ability for the stones to shoot a shot with some cheerleaders okay hey man 
Advances in sixth grade is interviewed by FBI as classmates reveal how the chubby misfit was bullied and tortured by popular clique. Yeah, but I thought all the girls out there just wanted somebody who was in touch with his emotions. Here's what happens, okay? Emotional men are dangerous men. Emotional men fill up prisons and jails across the world. This is what happens when you're not good with girls. You end up killing three of them and a guy that was in a happy relationship with one of your victims. The tale as old as time. And when you're told from the time that you even start, well, actually even before that, from the time that you're old enough to even understand stories that women are sugar and spice and everything nice and girls are princesses and they should be put on a pedestal. And then when you realize that that myth of, oh, just being a good guy and if, you're, if you just have your stuff together and if you just are willing to do anything for a girl, they'll take you seriously. All of that old order nonsense, that shit don't fucking work anymore. Some guys... Uh, come to that realization and then just decide oh okay well okay that doesn't work anymore that sucks i have that much time invested in those old order ideas what do i do now how do i move appropriately going forward oh okay i just do that that's great and fantastic other guys just go no it worked for all of my like it worked for my parents it worked for well it worked at least for a time with my parents before they divorced um Work for my aunt and no, uh, work for my grandparents. Oh man, they were so great and all that stuff. I know what the problem is. It's not me. It's all those bitches and I'm just going to get in shape and I'm going to exact my revenge. Hey man, it's Elliot Rogers 2.0. Don't be like this. FBI agents have interviewed Brian Koberger's middle school crush. They're going way back on this motherfucker in hopes of piecing together the psyche of a man is believed uh, as responsible for the gruesome murders of four Idaho college students. Kim Kenley, 27. Oh, she's still single? Oh, that sucks. Uh, contacted the Bureau shortly after learning her former classmate had been arrested for allegedly knifing four housemates to death at a university just 15 minutes from where he had been studying in november yo if he grew up in pennsylvania like i understand okay none of my classmates have ever made it that big at least i don't think so i don't even remember most of them okay and i'm just thinking high school now that i think about it for my frame of reference if anything happened or if anybody from my middle school popped off how the fuck would i know jesus like do you you sitting right there okay you listening to this stuff in the background do you remember anybody in middle school let alone any of the girls that you might have asked out but this bitch apparently has a fucking rolodex and she remembers down to what the motherfucker was wearing i don't know for sure but the two were sixth grade students in pleasant valley intermediate school in broadshead pennsylvania oh jesus fucking christ okay i remember when i went or where i went to sixth or sixth grade it was avondale elementary school it was a k through six school i don't remember who my homeroom teacher is now that i'm thinking about i legitimately don't that was 2002 just for frame of reference and these people are five years my junior so would that be 2007 grade 11 i don't remember any of grade 11 so but these people remember like it was yesterday or at least this broad does okay told the fbi uh, whatever she could tell them okay it was so long ago i couldn't imagine what she could tell the fbi i guess it was uh for character purposes yeah of course wow she was a cheerleader Oof, that school was down bad at that yo oh she's a nurse oh she's a nurse red flag red flag bro and she's not married come on that's another red flag Koberger, then a chubby awkward misfit had his story be told by a chubby awkward anyways uh would become relentless in his pursuit repeatedly leaving love letters in the locker and telling her he liked her according to the mom okay he would always say oh kim i think you're very pretty um just leave weird comments what <laughs> is uh kim's mom trying to say something that maybe she wasn't exactly the uh, cutest girl that's out there it's like a, it's a weird comment that he would say that she was cute <laughs> it's like ooh, maybe mom's super based and she'd say oh my god leave me alone oh guys like gir uh, yeah girls like guys who are persistent and they know exactly what they want this is why fuck it i'll just say it being red pill aware is so fucking important okay they did not give him the time of day the mom noted uh they yo why is her mom opining on this and why the fuck does she remember shit does she have that little going on I'm crying 
When the kids are little, uh, they're mean. They say, oh my god, thank you, but no. They don't say that? No, they go much more petty as like, ew, and now, gross, you're weird, go away. Kenley would eventually tell Koberger to buzz off, breaking his heart. Ever since that moment, he began sharpening his knife. Uh, at the time, she lived in Scotia, or, S yeah, I'll go with Scotia, a rural eastern Pennsylvania, little town 90 miles north of uh, Philadelphia, 30 mile drive from Koberger's home in Albrightsville. Uh, she's since left the area and lives in Charlotte, North Carolina, where she works as an occupational therapist and, oh, in an assisted living facility. Oh, she's a single mom. Of course she is. Oh, okay. She's 20. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kenley's awkward schoolyard encounters with Koberger are among several bizarre encounters to emerge from former friends and witnesses in recent days. Okay, fill me in on this one, okay. It paints him as a troubled, disgruntled young man who didn't fit in at school. Former classmates uh, have revealed Koberger was heavy set and subject to bullying and cruel taunts in middle school. Yo, know, I'll tell you, as somebody who came up in a similar situation, okay, I, I don't think I have that you know, picture, you know, readily available, but you can check it out. The first video that I've ever done on uh, my second channel, I had a picture of me when I was 16, so I guess a couple years older than um, what Koberger was in this uh, encounter with some, you know, fucking middle school girl, okay. I was a big fat dude busting out of a triple XL t-shirt. And okay, I was relentlessly picked on for being fat and quiet and a book nerd and all that kind of stuff as well. Okay, it made me who I am because, you know, if I didn't want to get picked on, if I wanted to get chicks, I would have to, I would have to develop as an individual. I would have to hone my skills. Okay, and it's like, okay, what are you? Well, you're, you're tall. You have a good frame on you. What can you do with that? Well, if you drop a whole bunch of uh, su substantial amount of body fat, you might have some muscles under there and it's like okay feel free to develop that okay go to the gym and you know figure that shit out and here i am today in a medium t-shirt and things are working out pretty fucking well for me all things considered don't need to get into specifics okay being quiet at the time well uh being quiet and brooding and stoic is one way to run game but if you don't have anything behind that if you don't have the skills and the ability to carry on a conversation afterwards after you break the ice yo you're just gonna be that quiet fucking weird dude who just you know holds up the corner of the wall and especially you know what if you're just glaring into their soul like our brother right here is doing okay if you just got that thousand yard stare and you've got nothing cool behind it nobody's going to take you seriously and no i don't think that this is one of those situations even though the media is going to paint it this way if somebody just would have touched his wee wee all of these murders could have been avoided now there's some deep-seated fucking hatred and there's something fucking wrong that's you know going on in this dude's brain he was a phd student he was achieving something he was in stem it just goes to show you if you're bad with women that's another reason i don't fuck around with a especially a bunch of my friends none of my friends from high school okay because they ended up being bad with money i've i've seen a couple of them and not a good sight okay and definitely bad with women they were terrible terrible funny people for the time but I outgrew that shit. They, for whatever they were doing back at the time, were still trying to be back in high school. High school wasn't that fucking great to begin with, okay? There's so much more opportunity out there in the world if you just develop a little bit. Because being a man, um, you're not afforded anything. You're not given anything. Women are provided their sexual market value up front. Being young, being fertile. Because you check this out, okay? The girl that he was lusting over at the time back in high school, that's her now at 27. A single mom put on about... 40 additional pounds okay she's not that same girl that uh, he was you know trying to pick up at the time but even if you were to just zoom everything up to where you know legal ages apply okay not trying to pine on a 14 year old that shit's fucking weird she might be a great person but from a sexual market value standpoint 27 pudgy single mom like an, and i know that that's a candid photo of her going to work but that's a three Come on, it might be a four if she tries a little bit, but you can pair and contrast that with Koberger and you can see it a little bit, okay? Uh, he's in shape, he was getting his PhD, took up boxing, uh, enlisted in, oh, the Army Rangers. Like, he had shit going for him. He was developing some sort of a character, but ultimately, being bad with women, ended up flipping a switch and... Well, sent him down this dark path, to be completely honest. Former classmates have revealed Koberger was heavyset, subject to bullying, cruel taunts in middle school, the whole clique of popular girls made fun of him in school. Yeah, that's what they do. Unless you're fucking the popular girls, they are dunking on you because they get all the alpha attention. Just the way it goes, man. You know it as well as I do. 
Uh, they were the cheerleaders and the one uh, and ones that every kid had crushes on. Of course, okay. Fuck, I remember that click. You remember that click too. They literally tortured him. Girls started making fun of him in middle school. Yeah, man, that's one of those things. It's like, okay, if I was to go back in time, okay, if I was to go back through, you know, middle school and high school and even grade school or whatever, what would I change about it? Absolutely nothing. Mostly because that's how I fomented my personality, you know, in order to deflect some of the bullying that was out there. You had to get funny, okay? You had to learn how to weaponize references, okay? You had to laugh at yourself. You had to be at least a little bit self-deprecating. And then you had to be able to dish it back out because, okay, cool. Nobody's going to continue to bully you if they know you're going to stand up for yourself. If you can cut them back, if you can make them look a fool verbally around their friends, they're going to be like piranhas and then circle on the guy who's weak at the moment. And then you can go ahead and run cover maybe for a minute, maybe for a week, maybe for a month. If it's good enough, you're good for a semester or something that was kind of foreign to me at the time, even though I was pushing what four bills and I was, Oh, what in high school, like what six, four or six, five. Okay. Moving up to my final form. Okay. I guess it didn't, you know, or didn't register with me until about, Ooh, yeah, I guess it would have been until I was about hitting the gym when I realized that, Oh fuck. I'm six, I'm six and a half feet tall. Oh, okay, cool. If anybody starts picking on me, I can start throwing hands. Even if I'm a little bit inarticulate with the way that I throw punches or something, if I'm coming over the top or if I'm bitch throwing like a fucking over the top hammer throws, it's like the, that shit doesn't fucking much work. I can at least intimidate a motherfucker to a point. It's like, those are the defense tactics that you have to learn in middle school okay if you're not f if you're not genetically gifted and that's the only time really okay actually no it's more or less status when you're running up in school okay because i was just gonna think the only time that really matters for a guy and the only thing that matters because once you leave school okay you know status is always going to be the most it's going to be the easiest way to uh, get yourself into it bed with a chick but looks to an extent you need the entire package money muscles game and then wrapped up in a masculine frame if you don't have that okay you're gonna end up doing some fuck shit in order to solve your reproductive problem and that's why i think growing up you know being bullied or whatever you would well whatever you would refer to as being bullied if you grow up like that in those types of situations makes you stronger as a man as long as you use that motivation in order to develop your own persona well, let's see what happened to Koberger. okay he was a totally different person he worked out constantly it was super aggressive a male friend said well he might have been a dork though let's just say uh, he had a short fuse and was constantly trying to change his style and personality to fit in with clicks yo that's a problem man if you're just trying to go around just trying to find different places where you're gonna fit instead of just letting your own personality dictate whatever group that you're going to be associated with or you're going to be leading yeah you're going to be constantly trying to square that circle that's not going to work out that well for you third former classmate added it's interesting to me the girls he accused of uh killing were nice looking and seemingly popular what can anybody um accurately speculate on that because i don't know man like they're blonde and stuff i don't fucking know popular i guess much like the ones that made fun of him throughout his childhood <sighs> six of one half a dozen of another i was like i don't know it's tough man because there's also another fe uh, theory because yes he was a one of the early reports was he was a militant vegan it's like oh okay cool so given the close proximity of the two locations like university of idaho is right on the border of washington state and he went to the university of washington okay it was what like a 10 a, a 10 and a half mile separation between the two places so not exactly a metropolitan sprawling area so vegan locations would have been few and far between and two of the girls i think started working at one of the very few vegan locations that were there maybe he took a shine to one of them and then started stalking them that's one of the theories that's out there okay and that's why i'm saying okay if you're bad with women it's gonna manifest in terrible fucking ways okay this is just the most extreme version of this because i don't see no girls stabbing up a fucking frat house just because they got rejected like girls can't take l's very well and it might escalate to keying up a car or something like that or breaking a couple of windows but when it comes to killing dudes it never goes that far because if they want to get fucked they just need to go down they just need to dress up a little bit okay like yo there's there's basic betty right there it's like do you think that she has a problem getting any male validation okay okay his theory is backed by former fbi agent jennifer coffinander okay who before Koberger's arrest told uh newsweek that she thought it could the killer could be an incel 
Of course she did. She had no information. This was before anything started to come out. It's like, oh, he's, he, he's a white guy. He's obviously an incel. Like, that's how far her fucking investigation went, I would imagine. Term referring to men who are unable to attract women sexually. Yes, involuntary celibate. That's what that means. Uh, Koffendoffer uh, speculated that Koberger could have seen all these beautiful girls go in and out of the house. And it's possible in his rage, his perf uh, personal horrific desires had gotten the better of him. Maybe. I don't know. Like, I don't think you need to be an FBI agent in order to come to that conclusion. She postulated that the killer was an individual with absolute horrible murderous... Okay, yeah. It's like, yes, yeah, he's a murderer. We got it. And if it wasn't for the technological advances when it comes to evidence collection, chances are he would have been a serial killer in any form or fashion. Because outside of a couple of different things, like cell phone, da cell phone tower data collection, okay, pinging his locations, and DNA to the button on a knife sheath that was left behind like this was the 70s or 80s nobody would have found this motherfucker but yeah uh, now i'm starting to understand why this story is so popular and continues to stick in the headlines because if it's not some stupid prince harry shit like i'm seeing this off on the side i don't fucking care about that stuff okay there's a lot of red meat in that story about how harry has basically lost his fucking mind at this point but realistically that dude okay if he goes down a similar road okay he's also really bad with women case in point look at his wife and the way that she's leading that relationship when she decides to break that shit off give it about five years max He's going to be left holding the bag. And because he's been so isolated away from his family, don't be surprised if he's left hanging. Okay. But that story is popular for the same reason that this story is popular. And this quote proves that wholly. Okay. An individual with absolutely horrible, murderous desires against these women. There's a guy that's dead at the exact same time. A femicide type case. And it came to a boiling point combined with an opportunity. Everything needs to be couched in a feminine centric frame, okay? Everything needs to be done in service of women. Oh, this was a murder. It was perpetrated exclusively against women. Three of the four people killed in this situation were a woman. Like, you, you don't know that, but that's a, that's a narrative that you're going to run with. Oh, he was bad with girls in middle school. So was everybody. To be completely, generally speaking, most people were bad. Most guys were bad with girls in fucking middle school. In sixth grade, they were bumbling around, okay? Let's keep it a buck. But if they have a way to spin it, it's like, oh my god, these, these boys who just don't know what to do. And then they grow up to be murderous men who just grow up to hate women. And they just want to enact their violent tendencies on them. I see what you're doing. Okay. It's been a minute since Elliot Rogers went on his, you know, stupid little fucking Spurg fest. Okay. So you need somebody new who's out there. And he has a much better thousand yard stare than some little fucking dork who also didn't realize that those old order tactics of just be nice, bring flowers, take a girl out to a date, and then maybe she'll be your girlfriend. She'll give you a peck on the cheek and you guys can live happily, happily ever after with the white picket fence, the 2.4 kids, and the dog and the cat at home. Shit like that doesn't fucking work anymore. And then continuing to feed men that idea while at the same time telling them that any of their urges to be masculine are fucking haram and that if you're losing weight, okay, and that if you have a short fuse whatever that's characterized as you're wrong for enacting boundaries you're trying to raise and cultivate men as defective women shit like this maybe not to this extent it's going to continue to happen and if you don't want to address the root problem of it the men are not being raised to be men and that women are being raised to be anything but feminine women you're going to continue to run into different problems in society and we're starting to reach zenith on this and that's why so many people are opining on topics like this that's why andrew tate took off because he's reinforcing old school methods updated for a modern age but nah i just continue to run out old bushy eyebrows and thousand yards stare and then we prop up good old single moms out there fucking yuck but with all that said thank you all very much for the gift of your time i've been don consuelo i should follow your gut and get after it take care everyone